Hello, this is John from QuantumLifetime.com and this is a tutorial on observables in quantum physics. Observables are basically anything that we can observe. So let's think of a person, for example, in everyday life. Because in fact, the laws of quantum physics should in theory apply to everyday life, although it seems that they don't, but let's imagine that they do. A person has certain things that you can observe about him or her. So you can observe the person's weight, for example, and the person's height. And we think of these observables, which have particular values, as being properties of the person somehow. They are somehow part of the person. Now let's imagine that we want to measure a observable like a person's degree of calmness. So we can imagine that a person might be not calm at all, so their calmness might be low, or they might have calm highness and be very calm. And we can, imag we can imagine testing this by going up to the person and telling them that there's a fire in the building where they're currently residing. Um, I'm not recommending doing that, of course. If they then jump up, and they, they run out or they scream or something, we say that their calmness is low. But if they just sort of raise their eyebrow and say, oh really, then their calmness is high. And similarly, we can imagine, we can imagine measuring their sense of humour by telling them a joke. And if they laugh, we say their sense of humour is good. And if they don't laugh or they just look puzzled, we say their sense of humour is bad. Although, of course, our joke might just not be very good. Now, these two observables are what we call incompatible in quantum physics. And the reason is that we can't measure one without disturbing the other. So if we think about weight and height, they are compatible. Compatible in the sense that we can measure weight and then we can measure height. And our measurement of height doesn't depend upon our measurement of weight or anything like that. But calmness and humour are incompatible because let's say we go to the person and we say the building's on fire. So we're trying to measure calmness. And then we say, why did the chicken cross the road? The person's going to probably first rush out the building. And then if they hear us at all when we try to test their sense of humour, they're probably not going to be amused. Whereas the other way around, if we say, why did a chicken cross the road? We tell some sort of a joke and they laugh. And we then say, by the way, the building's on fire. Probably they will laugh again because they will just assume that we're continuing our joke. And the main point here is that a measurement of calmness affects a measurement of humour. And a measure, measurement of humour affects a measurement of calmness. We can't measure both of these because um, we can't measure both of them in any sense accurately because measuring one affects the other. And a lot of variables are like that in quantum physics. The reason being that because very tiny things are easily disturbed, you can't measure very tiny things without disturbing them. And in fact, the kind of property that you're trying to measure is as much about the particular procedure you're using to measure it as it is about anything that necessarily resides in a particle. And it's like that with calmness and humour. What we're really doing here is we're applying a procedure and we're measuring the outcome of that procedure. And with very small particles, even measuring their position is applying a procedure that actually affects them and seeing what the outcome is. It's like measuring calmness or humour. And so for small particles, famously, momentum and position are incompatible. We can't measure one without disturbing the other. So these are all incompatible. And we're going to be looking at more of this later as we work towards creating a mathematical formulation for quantum physics. So that's it for this time. And join me again next time. And until then, Keep it real.